Oh, well, here goes the beast. Here goes the beast. Gonna be loud as fuck. I'm gonna hold my ears. Ooh, that rough Italian start. Just like every time. Nothing ever changes. What's up, guys? It's a nice day today. Actually, really, really, really good weather. I'm out of gas. And, uh, just gonna go on a quick little ride. Probably grab some lunch. Do our thing as motorcycle riders as we do. I gotta get some gas, so that's something that we gotta stop to do. Because riding motorcycles requires gasoline. That thing is so sexy, that single sided swing arm. So, today I wanted to talk to you about two things counter steering and clutchless shifting. So, to me, clutchless shifting comes second nature. Um, I use it a lot, but I don't use it normally riding. Honestly, the time I use it the most is when I'm riding the DRZ. So I can not have to worry about the clutch when I'm like climbing hills or doing whatever I'm doing. And I can really just get on it. Um, I can go over with clutchless shifting first. So normally if you ride a bike, you know how you know regular shifting works. You um, just slowly let out the clutch and you know give it some gas once you get there. But for you to shift into the next gear, so right now I'm going 33, 6 grand. I'm going to chop the throttle, let off. Alright, so when I chop that throttle like that, I'm instantly going to pull up and it slides into the next gear. Now right here, it's a little bit different decelerating, we'll go over that. But when I take off, I'm gonna take off, slowly let out of the clutch. I'm gonna slowly let out of the clutch, and then from there, I'm just gonna clutchless shift all the way up. So we're letting out the clutch. We're going, oh shit, I don't know where we're going. I'm following this fucking idiot. We might have to go back over this once we get going again. I guess it's a good closed road for me to teach you guys. Anyway, so we're taking off, just you know, normally letting out the clutch here. And then when we go, you're going to chop the throttle really quick and put slight pressure on your foot up. And it sl slips into next gear. That one was pretty rough because I didn't chop the throttle perfect. But the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it. Um, a lot of people say it ruins the transmissions. I haven't seen any transmission problems with the 919. And I put over 10,000 miles on it. So I'm just going to slowly let up let off and get back on the throttle so what I'm doing is I'm on I chop it off and then on that chop off I have pressure on the bottom to lift it up it slides into gear as soon as it slides into gear I give it a little bit more gas and you can do that all the way through all of the gears so we're going we're just gonna chop the throttle real quick Put it in second, you can chop it into third, you can chop it into fourth, chop it down. Alright, so downshifting is a little bit different. Ooh, what do we got going on here? Cool motor vlog stuff. Woo! Oh, dude, it looks like a car is like completely mashed up there. And look at the cop. Dude, there's cops everywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight cops. Oh no, they're just saying hi. How you doing today? Huh? Yeah. No shit. Um, but uh, yeah. So I guess the car got turned into a fucking wad of metal. Oh, I didn't even count those. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14, 14 car, 14 cop cars, right off of Quail and what? I think this is Coors. That's crazy. Anyway, um, so the way we would um, clutchless downshift, right? So say you're accelerating, or um, I'll kind of show you. The way it works is when you downshift, you're gonna bloop the throttle, so you're gonna give it a little bit of throttle. So say I want to downshift right now, I'm going to bloop the throttle and like put little pressure on 
the pedal down. So, actually, you don't even have to bloop it that much. Just so you'll just bloop it. Now, it, it seems really rough um, when I'm doing it. I know you guys can see the bike jerking forward and backwards, forward and backwards, but that's kind of just me being in the wrong gear when doing it. I mean, when you're normally traveling and you're normally downshifting and you're normally upshifting, it's not that violent, but me going into first at four, or, you know, going into first while we're going fast makes it jerk a lot. But clutchless shifting is very, very, very simple. Um, I love it on the DRZ because I don't really ever have to touch a clutch unless I'm trying to, like, race take off. Um, I don't really use it too much on the sport bikes because the fact that there's a clutch there and I like to use it. Um, it's really, really fun. Really, really fun to use it. If you are um, if you get really good at it, it really helps you with your takeoffs and getting into a top speed because you can just put it in, you know, all the way to the top of the revs and not have to worry about it. So like that, clutchless, clutchless. Once you get to where you can shift, it, 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 you can see there's no jerking. There's no jerking whatsoever between my, my shifting. So I'm going, put it at five. I'm gonna let go of the throttle and pull up and it goes into the next gear. Say so I'm like, oh, I wanna slow down. Actually, let's move over. So say I, I uh, so I mean, I don't know, fifth right now. Say I wanna slow down, I'm gonna give it a little gas and let it off. Even then, you don't even have to give it too much gas. Just, just give it a little bit of gas and chop off. Once you chop off the gas, put the pressure down and it'll start to slow you down. You just have to be able, you have to get it right in between the chop. Right between the chop of the throttle. Like right now, you just have to pull it up at the right time. If you don't pull it up at the right time, you're gonna be fucked. Uh, it's really, really fun to do. Uh, I'm probably gonna start riding all day like that just for the fact that I'm going over this video. Now we're gonna do some counter steering. I'm gonna ask my buddy here to like, um, Show some counter steering when he rides, and hopefully we can get him to do it. Hey, counter steer! Except for the video. So I'm gonna have him do some counter steering, and you can see how what he's doing is whichever side he puts pressure on with his wrist, the bike goes that way. Of him. Anyway, so counter steering really works as like say um, you need to get in a turn, you'll push on your right palm and it dips the bike. It's the best way to dip a bike left and right. Left, right, left, right. And so what I'm doing when I do that is I'm putting pressure on the handlebar. Right? By putting pressure on the handlebars, twisting the forks, turning the tire the opposite direction, allowing the bike to dip. So you can get really low while counter steering. Um, if you ever watch MotoGP or if you watch Fastest on Netflix, there's a point where they do slow-mo and you see them come from one turn into the next and you see how the tires turned a little bit? It touches and then they dip. See, there he is, that's counter steering right there. You don't use your body, you use your wrist. You see his body staying stationary, perfectly up and down, and he's not using his wrists. Or he's not using his body, he's using his wrist to, I guess, make for the turn. Counter steering is really fun, especially when like, if you're going through the twisties, you can definitely use counter steering to get your bike into the position that it needs to be and then dip into the corner. A lot of people don't understand that when you corner, you want to have your face, your elbow, and your foot, especially your foot, pointing in the direction you want. You want all your weight on the pegs. You want any weight on your handlebars. You don't want any weight anywhere else except for on the peg. So when you're in a corner, you're gonna point your foot and your hand and your elbow and your face to where you're going, not where you are. So if you're like normally just in a turn and you're just kind of like lollygagging, like not getting into it and you don't have the right form, a lot of people watch Rickney Mouse. I think that's what it's called. I don't know what it's called. And it has the Maholin on it. And they go down all the time because they don't have the right form. Now there are some guys out there who know exactly what the fuck they're doing and could definitely teach me some shit. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the best rider in the world or anything, but um, you just gotta understand the way the bike works. But when they're doing it, most people, they don't have their body in the right position and they wind up either high-siding or low-siding.
I'm actually looking for a sport bike class now, their super sport bike class, so I can learn how to do everything proficiently. But counter steering is something that you can incorporate in every day, like even just like warming your tires up. Like it, it makes it so easy to duck and dive left and right. Pressure, 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 pressure. And you just duck and dive left and right. That's what counter steering is. If you've ever taken an MSF course, I'm, I'm pretty sure they teach counter steering in the MSF course. Counter steering is just a really easy way to get your bike left and right. Because by me just turning, using my body, that's just all I can do on my body. But when I counter steer, I can pretty much, I can almost put myself in a speed wobble by counter steering, you know, really, really fast. Um, it's just something that most riders do, like I said, to put their bike in the position that they want it to be in um, before going into a turn. You will counter steer and then dip and lean over to however you're doing. Counter steering is something that I incorporate every day and don't even realize it anymore. But as you can see, he's slowly going back and forth and his top staying straight up and the bike's dipping back and forth. It's a really, really good demonstration of counter steering right there because you see how his top is staying stationary while the bottom is moving back and forth. Um, we normally do this to like get our tires warm if we were like to go to the track, get them nice and warmed up. Um, I don't know. It's That's all I got really. I'm kind of out of words. I don't want to be repetitive or redundant. Is it redundant? Repetitive? I don't know. Right now we're going to pick up some other guys. So I don't know if I'm going to chop these videos up just in case. But who knows. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this one off. Adios amigos, if you like my channel, feel free to rate, subscribe. If you have any questions about anything you've ever heard about a motorcycle, um, feel free to ask me. Who knows, I may not know what the fuck I'm talking about, and I may know. Who knows? Alright, adios amigos, talk to you later.